Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan and we are once again in Satisfactory today. We're going to be picking up where we left off on the Wheeljack Storage Depot. I hope to put a roof on it and I hope to get the last little bits of Tier 6 sorted out as well. Uh, thanks for coming in. I hope everyone's having a good day so far. Loki Loki, welcome back. Sweet Sandy, Blast Jordan, Dan, everybody's hanging out in chat, doing their things. Uh, Mind Trip Media used 100 bits for the work and the lurk. And CJ RV Williams, yes, I'm going to use your full username, has resubscribed with Prime for 35 months just a few minutes ago. Drive by Prime sub. I'm sure CJ is also working and lurking. CJ, thank you ever so much. 35 months. Wow, that's almost three years. That's incredible. I really, really appreciate that. So cool to have regulars in chat that have been part of the community for years now. Mosaic Dream says, I finally decided to get off the couch and make some breakfast. Going to donate blood in a few hours. Well, it's good that you have some breakfast ahead of that. And it's a really nice thing that you're doing. That's really cool. Hope no one in the chat is squeamish. My satisfactory mug is dirty, so we have to use the Disney mug. At least it's Disney Fantasia, back when Disney was really good. How is it over one year since I found you, says Blast Jordan? I don't know. Time does fly. It is now nearing, we're not mid-October, but we're, we're a good week into October. Uh, Canadian Thanksgiving is this coming weekend. It's wild, right? That penguin dude, hello, hello. Might as well get into the game. I did uh, jump in last night. I was taking some screenshots and I just could not stand some of the disorganization. So I, I moved some things around. I don't think it would have made very good uh, video. There was a lot of stuff that was happening like very close to camera. Uh, but now, um, as you can see, there's no more ceiling wires over here. I've got these red beams in everywhere and I tidied up all of this. Um, not a huge fan of the super tight connections right there but uh i think overall it just feels a little bit more easy to read easy to see what's going on easy to see problems if we have them uh so all that seems to be sorted out uh we do not have this side of the factory the outside wall sorted out at all uh and we have yet to decide what we're doing with the top and i think the first thing i want to do is i want to i want to make this beefy I think the problem what you have right now is that this feels like a very thin facade, right, on on what is a very large building. And this is 12, I think, long, but it's obviously going to go a little bit longer. So we have to decide what's going to happen here and where, uh, but I need to figure out what's happening along here. So we've got one section here. And then we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This twelve is this part right here. And I think what we need to do is have these three sections be solid and not glass. So I'll start with that. That's the wrong angle. Do I have a two meter roof? So I think we'll have to switch back to solid there. And I think our skylight will then end here, which makes sense. Which I think is what I did over here. Yep, that's what I did there too. And I think I'm actually going to make this a lot bigger. It will mean that we will lose the skylight inside. So we'll do a test to see what this is going to look like. I think I want this to be three, three, um, three foundations wide. You're forcing yourself to go do it, Mosaic Dream. Not your favorite thing, but you've got a rare blood type. Oh, cool. Well, again, tip of the hat to you. It's really kind. Concrete foundation. I hope that there's a quality of life update coming where they change some of the... Um, some of the functionality of the, the menu keys. Get rid of this stuff before we change this up. So 
So I'm thinking this is going to come up to there. So from underneath, it would actually be... Hmm. Do we go with three wide or do we just go with two? I think I may have to raise this up. I don't want to. Oh, no, wait. That's going to drop down by the thickness of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll lose those as well. It's hard to tell in the, in the daytime. So I may have to wait until... Or in the nighttime, I may have to wait until daytime to really get a good feel for it. But what I was hoping to do uh, is this. Guess we would keep the profile. That's an inverted ramp. And then this would end up being a wall. The way that these things attach is always weird. Loki says, I am new to Satisfactory entirely. Does this big factory make one thing, or is it like Minecraft? Are you making a bunch of stuff industrial, industrially? Uh, this is... Uh, you can do either. Uh, you, you can design these factories to do however you want it um, to be manufactured. But what we are doing is very similar to a Minecraft storage system where I am making all of the immediate phase two, phase three buildables. So everything from plates, rods, screws... Reinforced iron plates, modular frames, rotors, stators, motors, pipes, beams. Sorry if I'm going fast. Encased industrial beams, wire, cable, quick wire. This is manual. We're not making this here. And then none of this is being made here either. These are just storage, manual storage units. And we have a, also over here, we are making um, heavy modular frames. And we were making computers, but I ran out of circuit boards. So I've got to add a circuit board thing to this. And this is out of screws. And you can see in the top right-hand corner, we're trying to get to a milestone. So we're trying to get to the point where we can submit 100 frames. And what else does this need? We're good, it looks like. Yeah, we should be fine. So I do need to figure out the circuit board thing. I might have to just manually make... How many computers do we have? 49. How many circuit boards do we need? 10... 4. Okay, so we're going to do this with a manufacturer. Or assembler, rather. This whole idea of this section was to have my manual, my manual inputs here. Can you not put those side by side? That's annoying. Wow. Huh. I feel like they designed a few things separately in this game. Circuit board, and this is copper sheet and plastic. Well, we've got both of those. I 
I just need to power it. And I need to output it into a bin. And that looks like a good enough bin. Circuit boards be made. Perfect. I guess I could have just sent this directly into the manufacturer, shouldn't I? That would have been smart. That would have been smart. Let's do that for now. So that'll make us some stuff while we are puttering around, trying to figure out what's left. Uh, we have, oh, I can just make four of those. We're almost, almost good there. Oh no, I can submit those. Perfect. We'll go do that. It's not gonna hurt to have a few extra on hand, so we'll let that craft in the background. Of course there's a command. Uh, this community is so organized. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. And I, I have my mods to thank for some of those excellent commands. All right, so this can be submitted. So um, Loki Loki, just so you know, the progress in the game is marked by tiers. Tier zero is the tutorial. So they start you off very, very slowly with things like um, upgrading the hub, you know, iron ingots, wire cable, real basic stuff. We are way up here in tier six where we are trying to get a larger blueprint designer and in order to unlock this feature in the game you have to submit parts to um the space elevator or not the space elevator to the drop pod and with each kind of progressive tier things get more complicated right so you've got motors and cable and plastic but down here we're looking at heavy modular frames and computer and rubber so there's a lot more happening there uh, and we are almost ready we just need 100 computers and I've got 49, so we're almost there. And I've been able to lay out all this concrete and, and we've been at this for 70 hours, 85, wow, so almost 100 hours in this save. Reminds me of the joke, if I dropped you into the woods with an axe, how long would it how long until you could send me an email? <laughs> yeah, fair. We do have stickers active on the channel. Um, I was experimenting with some text-to-speech stuff, as well as some new images and whatnot. So if you are interested in supporting, we now have stickers as a fun way for people to jump in and have some fun. There should be a notification popping up in chat. You can also do bang sticker in chat to see what's up. Uh, so this is, should be making some computers now. I think they only stacked a 50. Yeah. So we should be good. This should make another chunk. It's going to run out of plastic before anything else. Oh, I should probably switch that to silica for now. Because we need to make some glass changes here. Uh, 
All right, so how does that feel if it's a big chunky thing like that from outside? Now that we've got some automation happening in the background. Doesn't change much about here. It's still very white. I need to add a lot more gray to the top part of this build. I think that feels better. I like that it's more substantial. Yeah, so we'll probably take this out. And we'll get rid of this. We could potentially have an upside down roof piece in here, but for now, I'll just do this. Something else I realized is that we have other wall materials. And because we have that wall color, we can actually make this. Oh, does that not work on those? It doesn't work on the walls like it does in the concrete foundations. That's annoying. What has to happen there? You're white. Does this have to go up to like one? Oh, that's not the right one. Oh, that doesn't work on the gray ones. That's interesting and annoying. Well, crap. That, I don't like how boring this is under here. I think what I want to do here is add maybe some structure. I don't know if it would look good if we had like a pillar in here. It wouldn't look good underneath, I don't think, because you'd be able to see through. place them on that anyway. Yeah, like something in there maybe. Chances are what I would do is, is create like a concrete thing. Really here in the middle is probably where I would put it. big chunk. So like one, two, three. Do like a two meter. And then don't want it to come up. That's a four meter. So then we can do a one meter. And then we could do a two meter or one four meter ramp. And then underneath, we would have to do a one meter inverted ramp. Somewhere, there it is. Oh, that's twisted the wrong way. And not place it the way that I want it. Why are you not letting me place it in there? That's where it should go. That's annoying. I mean, I guess if we cover it up with walls, it won't matter. I kind of wanted it to be exposed. I think that's the inside wall. 
Yeah. So maybe this has to be replaced? And then we do a ramp the other way. I'll do my best for anybody that's got questions about Satisfactory, by all means, just let me know. Uh, they've changed the way that you um, some foundations interact with one another, and it is frustrating. For sure. So essentially it looks like I have to do like a two meter... Yeah, there's not going to be a way to do this, I don't think. I have to cover it up. So I can't do it with foundations, I'll have to do it with walls. Which is fine, we'll just change the color. That's right. So I'll give it some sort of structure. I might want to do some overlay there as well. But right away, I mean, the first thing I want to think about doing is, like, I kind of want to cut away something of, in there. Be like, an angle like that would be really good. So, like, if I came up here and grabbed one of these really tall guys. Oh, is that the bottom? Okay, we can't go lower than that. I think they can both occupy the same space. They cannot. Okay, so this can't be that low. So there's not going to be a way to actually do this then. Unless I nudge it. See that shape a lot, although it's usually steeper. I don't think I can make it any steeper. Hmm. Yeah, this is all just aesthetics, Loki. Yeah, I'm just trying to make it look. I should mention uh, there's a little image of uh, Wheeljack, the Transformer, in the top left hand corner. Uh, I also have uh, kind of like a brain board here, where um, my image is over the my camera's over the car a little bit, but you can see like the colors and the angles. Kind of going for. It. I really like his cheeks. It's a very kind of iconic look to Wheeljack, and so you can see like. His cheeks are kind of the inspiration for that shape, right? 
And I want to light this up blue as well. But this is just like, make it look like a cool ro robot factory type deal. Um, right now, not very successfully. I think we'd be better off with a, a single strip into here. What I'm hoping to do, actually what we could do is, if I could get, can I get a single, I don't know if I can get this to overlap. Do it with four. Can I do it with a full? Yeah, okay. Is that going to affect how it looks inside? Probably. No, okay, that's good. That's fine. So what I could do here is use some of the stuff we've been doing at other places. So I've got this ability to place these down. That would show up inside. That does not. We'll go one higher and see what it looks like. Yeah, so that shows up. Okay. And then I feel like from there, I might have to push those back a little bit just because they're kind of fighting with the edge there. You can sort of see what I'm, what I'm going for. Like we could even pull some of this away. I watched Total Eclipse play the other day, and I, I guess it's the control button. I didn't realize that you could do this. Mine kept on snapping to the middle, but if you hold control, you can slide them along here. And it's way more convenient. Uh, that looks like it's probably going to stick through. Yeah, so I won't do that. I could, however, come at it like a little higher. Oh, that's going to stick through the other way, though. I guess. <laughs> Looks like he's kind of wearing Thor's helmet. Oh, um, in some of the images, yeah. So one of the things that they did with um, with Wheeljack in the Transformers universe is that they made him more like a samurai. Uh, but, uh, that's on the like the left hand side, but on the right hand side in Generation One, he was more of like the tech guy. So he always had like rockets and lasers and stuff. He didn't have swords. So they did some cool stuff with him. I I need to look up and see what Transformers cartoons I, I may have missed in the last little while. We could have something like that. I don't know how great that is, but it's I'm going to have to play with that a little bit. I was hoping to have more verticality happening, but we're kind of stuck. Yeah, I'll have to play with that. Have to 
play with that. You can see it's, I'm kind of echoing what we've got going on out here. A little bit. Well, maybe the shape sh should be square on the top. Might be better. Uh, but that doesn't work there. This should eliminate the Z fighting that we're getting. And while I'm doing that, I should maybe, wouldn't be a bad idea to lower it if I can. like that's going to work better because that won't affect that. That looks better. So you can see how it eliminates the Z fighting on the end there. Kind of makes it look like it's a stacked structure thing. I kind of feel like we could just stay with this being solid. I think that's a decent spot for it for now. Could even use like a little Bump here. <laughs> sort of looks like a bow tie, so no. I all of a sudden I see a person. Look <laughs> at the face, legs, and arms, right? Look <laughs> just as soon as you see it, you're like, dang it. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. But this is the kind of place where you can put like signs and put some cool stuff up here. Okay. Let's just go check on our computers and see where we are. So I would love to unlock that blueprint designer. I think that would be very helpful with what I want to do next. 12. We need more plastic and more cable. Still have quite a few left to go. And this is just doing its thing, and that's fine. Are we stuck? We're stuck on bows. So 40 per 16 plastic per. Eight cables. So plastic is the real bottleneck. Hey, let's do a little this. It's ugly, but it'll work.
I really want to get the trains going so I can start automating plastic coming down this way. Speaking of, we are getting very light on plastic. Let me know, folks, if you feel like the stream stickers plug in chat is too often. I've set it to uh, every 15 minutes or every 10 lines of chat. Now that it's the daytime, I feel like we can get a better handle on what's happening up here. I don't think I mind that that's like that. I kind of like the, the weird kind of blue glow the lines have. It's interesting. Okay, so let's make that adjustment. Um, I guess we could make this solid. This just needs to get filled in, I guess. How am I going to do this? where that is no that's lower I don't think I want to do that if anything it would be a better straight window Can we do walls over windows in this? I think we can. I guess I could just go straight down with that, couldn't I? And then we could, instead of having glass there, one thing we could do would be like an, a two meter angled glass roof. We'll go down below and see which looks better. Oh, definitely the angle, yeah. So we'll get rid of that, get rid of that. And this will be like the transition from a larger piece. Yeah. And... Hmm. We do have angled corners that I could mess with too. So if I wanted to, I think I could do that. Do we think we need these parts here? I wasn't planning on making them red. Whoops. Uh, do you have like something pumping oil out and refining it? Yes, it is uh, way over here. That's why I'm trying to get it back to base. So there's an oil node there, and that's turning um, oil into rubber and plastic and a little bit of power. And then over here, we've got quartz that's also uh, moving around. Actually, this is inaccurate. We've got that tapped now. Um, and that's putting stuff into what's called the dimensional depot, which is this thing up here. This little Mercer sphere here uploads stuff to the cloud. And we have 30 upload per minute. And we can then grab it from here. So if I go for plastic, this is actually being uploaded somewhere else. Right? Rubber and then quartz. 
and you can pull it down. Um, it's like an ender chest. If you're familiar with Minecraft, it's like an ender chest. It's like putting a hopper into an ender chest, but you can't put this to take stuff out. It can only go in. The only way you can pull out is via your inventory. So it's like, it's a meant to be like a quality of life, not transportation of items across the map, if that makes sense. And then, what was I looking for? I... I don't know. Loki with the 100 bits. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. See, I don't know if I need these things or if they feel out of place now. Because what we could do is just extend the roof glass, right? We could just have this be one giant kind of atrium looking design. And then have it be supported between these two big chunking supports. I don't know why I've dropped it down, but Keeps it interesting, I guess. I mean, I think that's, that, that does look cooler, if you ask me. We could break it up. We could put, like, a strip down the middle, maybe. And this is one, two, three, four. This will give us our restrictions on height on this side. Which we are uh, going past at the moment. So if that's the case, I don't think I need any of this, right? We could just have it be flat on the back. Super simple. You're not going to be really up here at all, so it doesn't need to look like anything spectacular. Bali, hello, hello. How's it going? Uh, yes, okay, yeah, I talked about it on the on the spun trunks this week, yeah. Oh, no, Blast Jordan, sorry you're not feeling well. Uh, take care, get some rest, thanks for coming by. And again, so cool that it's been a full year of you hanging out and supporting the community. I really appreciate it. So I think the next chunk is going to be here, centered on the door. Although the door is in... Oh no, the door's on one, so it's this section here. So the easy way to kind of do this is to grab one of these and just zoop it all the way across here. And... We could, um, we could have like... That could be solid. So I was just doing this to line things up, but we could add like a, a top to that. I kind of wonder whether we should. Hmm. For now, we'll keep it bright. But that's an option. Um, and maybe it doesn't have to be this thick. Maybe we can do something smaller. don't know though if I want it to put a cap on this because this really reduces 
what we can do back here. I feel like from this section here, I'd want to go straight up. Like, I feel like here, I would want to have some sort of wall. And have like a, a bigger a bigger back like something that would connect over to here this is gonna be very square but we can change the shape of it later I feel like the back of the building has to have some sort of some sort of caboose doing well thanks says Bally entertaining the youngest while having the stream on in the background very cool well Hope the youngest is entertained. These would be our two meter uh, up. This is also just kind of practice and fun working with different shapes. this um, awesome sink here in a second although I'd like to try and incorporate the awesome sinks so that they do kind of stick out the roof I think that could be f kind of fun in this area so like maybe we have them in the back here or we could have them on this thing like this could be exactly where the awesome sink is we could just reposition it so it's like in the middle somehow some way and this is just two meter foundations across the top. How do I fill that in? Ramp, right. Yeah, it's a very strange sort of like angle within an angle I've got going on here. At least we've got a roof now. It feels a little bit more like a complete thought. Once we've got the shape of it, we can start to pull things down. I don't think I had to use three of them at the other side, did I? Maybe. Oh yeah, okay, I did. So now coming in the front door, it really feels like a facility, right? I don't think I want to break this up. I don't think I want to actually have, if anything, it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'd be right here. We'd have, maybe we could have like a thicker metal beam or something. We could try 
Um, maybe something like this through the middle could be interesting. If we had it going horizontally across there and then down. It's going to look like it has more support, maybe. But I like it. It's very bright during the day, which is what I want. The question, though, is like I had planned on putting a bunch of uh, facades here. But now this gets very close to the roof. And I don't exactly know what we should do up here. I don't think I want it to connect. That's just going to... One, it's going to connect at a funny spot. And it's going to block the light. So I'm okay with seeing some of these guts. Like, I, I don't mind seeing this stuff. I would like to cover these things up. So we're going to go at least to here. Maybe not that boring of a shape. Oh, do we have it? We've got it. That's a hundred. Yay. I find a lot of the game in this kind of phase is about multitasking. It's about like setting stuff up in the background, going off and having some fun, doing some design, and then remembering like every 15 minutes or so to just check to see where things are. So Loki, this is the process of getting your milestones finished to complete your tiers. So we are now ready to complete phase two is now 100% complete. Uh, phase three, we cannot unlock yet, though. And you'll see in a minute here. You might need to get this game. Coffee Scene has got a sale on right now in bundles, I think. Milestone reached. The blueprint Mark II improves upon the Mark I in every dimension, except for the metaphysical ones. This improvement was made available due to complaints from pioneers about other pioneers not being capable of managing their space efficiently. <laughs> we listen to pioneers always. Pioneers complaining about other pioneers. So all this does for us, I say all, this is actually a pretty big win. So this is the blueprint designer and right now it is um, four foundations wide. So there's one, two, three, four. And the new one, the Mark II, is five foundations wide so we can build the new one it requires 20 computers so we still have to make more computers but just so you can kind of get a get, get an idea like if I lock this blueprint somewhere granted it is on a slightly higher level but like it's higher it's also wider and longer so you can do more complicated stuff inside Except for the metaphysical ones. Loki, if you enjoyed Portal, you would love this game. In terms of the sense of humor that they have for the writing. It's very good. So I want to remove that um, blueprint designer. And I want to move it over here, closer to where we're working. Let's see if we've got enough computers to do it. Cable. I don't think I have any computers stored away over here. No. mind actually going out and see if we can up our power consumption too. We should maybe make a trip with a truck to get some plastic and rubber. Now that we need to make some computers at faster rate. Do I need for the blueprint designer? 20 computers. I might be able to just make that by hand. Blueprint designers are what makes machines? No, I'll show you, actually. Um, so you can lay out blueprints and save them. So you can lay out machines. So um, 
let me just make enough to make the designer and I'll show you rather than explain it I'll just show you so this is like the crafting bench in Minecraft and but instead of a layout you just have to have the inventory to make stuff it is a lot easier to explain showing people Sandy I agree I think it was 20 or one short this one, this should have completed by now. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll just throw one down over here. It's a big piece of equipment. So, uh, that's not the best place. Let's go somewhere where it's flat. You can actually see it, the whole thing. Okay. That's massive. Like, you really need to have the space for this. So when you're building machines and production lines, let's say you're smelting some ore. So you need a smelter, right? So you'd have a smelter and then you'd have a belt that would be taking stuff out of the smelter. And I would have to set this all up by hand, you know, and then I, maybe I'd have to have a splitter, you know, I put a splitter on the belt and then I'd have to have that go into the next thing. I have another one of these here. So I would have to build this all in the world by hand, right? So it's several different items. There's recipes involved. So you can do that. Absolutely. That was what we've done over there. That's what we did in here. All of these machines, uh, well, not these, but the ones down here, I placed these all, all the machines down there working, I placed them all by hand because it's a very specific, very simple setup. Now, if I go down here, I don't think I can load in my early blueprints, but I can at least show you what a new blueprint would look like. So if I want to place a blueprint in there and save it as a new one, uh, I have uh, over in the other smelting facility, we have 30 smelters. So rather than laying out smelters individually, you go to your blueprints that you've made and saved. And this is a smelters five up so it's five iron smelt smelters with the logistics below so you click on this and because i built it and saved it i can now place this anywhere in the world right as long as i've got the materials in my inventory so rather than building uh, each individual smelter each individual input and output i can just place this down right it'll just build everything it all functions the recipes are saved everything's ready to go and then I can just do with this whatever I want. I can just I put the inputs in here and the outputs in there, and we're we're done. We're done, right? That's that's it. It's as if you built a wall in Minecraft in segments, and you were able to save the segments and then place like a five by five by ten wall segment in one go, right? That's kind of that's kind of the basics of it. Uh, you can also delete things individually. Or if you go into blueprint delete mode, you can just delete the entire thing in one go too. It's very cool. It's a huge quality of life change in this game. Uh, and Sweet Sandy, speaking of quality of life, is letting me know that it is indeed time uh, for me to take a break. So we are gonna stare at the pretty lasers while I refresh my coffee, grab a quick stretch. You should too. And if you don't mind, maybe tell a friend about the stream. We are trying to grow the channel and the more that we can spread things around, the better. I'll be right back.
All right, let's uh, see what else we can clean up. Now that we've got the big blueprint designer, I don't need this little one. So we can remove this from the countryside. Uh, clear the blueprint designer. Again, I really wish that they would be consistent with their menus and how the escape key does and does not function in some of the menus. Don't need that. Don't need that. So we're in the trend part of the, I guess, playthrough where we're kind of moving away from this area, slowly taking down some of our temporary stuff. I'm actually still on the fence about whether or not I'm going to be paving the whole the whole area. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I think I'm kind of done with these. I don't know if we really need this anymore. We've got this constant trickle of tickets happening with other stuff. Oh, we've got another four. Anything else we can buy in here? So, Loki, we've got uh, like a little Amazon shop where you can use in-game tickets that you submit um, into the awesome sink with parts uh, you earn parts or earn tickets via parts and then you can buy cosmetic stuff we've got four tickets right now speaking of stuff the penguin dude cheered with 100 bits and put down a sticker thanks very much I really wish that um, twitch in the activity feed would say that it's a sticker it happens in chat, but um, it only it doesn't show up as like a sticker. It just says "Cheers, 100 bits" in in the activity feed. But yeah, we do have stickers. Uh, there should be like a little heart somewhere up there if you hover over the over the the vod um, or the video. And uh, if not, then there's in it's component one wherever that is. Somewhere's over chat. I didn't put it in a panel because I didn't think most people went to the panel during streams. The hub, the um, the mouse over thing on stream seemed to be a better idea. So we could get those conveyor things. Clean pipeline would be good. So that's one ticket. Uh, we could save up and get the copper paint finish, which actually I might want to do. And metal roof. I don't know that we really need those. Foundations, curve foundations are six. That would be kind of fun to have. We don't have like round things in the game. We've got quarter pipes, but you d you can't do like round in the Y axis. You can only do round on the Z and uh, the X and the Z axis. You can't go up. You can't make something round that way like a wheel, which is, you can, but it's really tricky. Windowed walls. That's a long way away. I say we get the pipes and I guess the roof. That or we wait for the copper paint. I'm probably going to wait for the copper paint. Yeah, we'll wait, I guess. I think I'm done with this. We could continue with it, but I have to supply it with more pipes. I'm tempted to just delete this whole thing and redo it somewhere else. Oh, we've got stuff. Certainly don't need all that. We can just do that that way. Oh, wow. A lot. We've got a whole bin full of wire over there. I'm not too worried about it. So again, this will clean up the area even more. And re remove a task from our repetitive list. I can stop stepping over these things every time I want to go in the hub. We're getting real close to having a clean area here, which is good. I'd like to, I need to find a place to move the hub to over here. That's what I would like. We just did walls there. I 
guess we can remove this stuff. It's got a weird glow on it. I think that's because I'm not using certain graphic settings. How do we figure this out? This is going to be interesting. I guess... That comes right over to the edge. I probably want to bring this all the way in. That doesn't affect the bottom, so that's good. But then how do I want to handle this? This feels strange. We may have to rethink the shape of that. I think it could also benefit from having maybe a pillar or something on the outside. Yeah, very, very plain. We will have to mess around with how we want that to look. I don't think that affects the inside. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, this just feels like a very strange connection. I feel like we might want to do something here where this actually comes down all the way. Sort of like, sort of like that. Even that feels a little bit strange. Um, I don't think we need these here. Oh, I see what happened. What if I did this? That's going to be weird out here. Well, I say weird. It'll be weird, but we could make it look more solid, which is the shape that I was just talking about. And then that in here looks a little unsupported, so we might have to do something along here to make this look Decent, again, probably something to do with like a pillar. I feel like we could probably make that look okay. Makes this look a little bit less boring, but then also doesn't really get in your way. Feels supportive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I might actually want to turn around. And then here... Don't exactly know how we can handle that. See, that unfortunately I don't think is going to work for there. We'll have to come up with something else.
have not thought about how to handle that. That's not terrible. If we frame it right, it could be okay. That does look very solid <laughs> in a weird way. Something needs to hold the roof up. Solid chunk of wall. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um. I guess I can put these in here. So, why are these slow? The output that's jammed? Yeah. So I've got a bottleneck where there's just too much stuff on the sushi belt that's getting sunk. I need two of these. We need two sinks going. It seems to be flowing through here fine. The bottleneck is down below. You can see it's slow here because of this, right? And then down this way, it's fine. I'm not sure whether that's just a graphical thing or what, but it's also slow, like this belt here. This is really slow, right? Because there's just so much overflow stuff on it because we're not building fast enough right now. It'll be different if I'm putting down a lot of machines and whatnot. So this side also needs its chunk. I need to put a door over here too. I want to have access out this way. This is what I mean. I'm not sure about painting the whole biome with foundations. We definitely want to put a door there. I think I went out by an extra foundation. Since air has mass, you just need a lot of air underneath it to support it. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. So this is in line with the glass and then this is over top of the other thing and then I've got a half thing there. So this side has got two of those. So we've got the glass, but then we also have this extra width here. So I'm going to go out another one. And then I guess another one. Or at the very least, half one. And then I'll just do stairs for now, just so we have access. Those look cool. I do feel that ramps feel more Cybertronian, so I may not I may not stick with stairs. I may do more ramps. But we have this to consider as well. Now this doesn't have to go all the way down. That's still enough space for me to walk. So the broad strokes on this side are to have this like this.
Oh, that's supposed to be unpainted. So we could just bring this straight down. It's tight but doable. That would give us a section of three on this side. door here. And this is that section there. I think I just made that solid. Obviously that's not going to stay like that. Yeah, that's just solid right down to the right down to the line. So I find with these builds I want to put in like the broad strokes first so I know what I can work within and then I'll change it from there. That was the original corner in the build. It's coal. Why do I have that much coal? I guess we can just bring this straight down. So this is where I don't know what's happening with the shape. What I do want to decide is what we're going to do up here. So I want this to have a nice window. We know that we've got a solid bit coming to here, so this actually is not going to work. And the windows that I used on the other side are the solid ones? Yeah. I think that goes better with the skylight. So we'll do that. And... Started on this one. Yep. Actually, I don't know where we started. Do we connect right to it? I think we did. Yes. So this is technically not there. At least, not yet. So weird that you can't attach these to the underside. You have to put a window up there first. Oh, I remember this now. Right. This doesn't go. I think we only have the one window on the other side. So I might make this side special.
Well, that's good to know for a configuration. That's pretty compact. I didn't realize that they would line up like that. That's cool. That's what I've got over there, right? Yeah. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight windows. But they're high. Oh, I've continued this shape the whole way down. Right. I don't think I want to do that on this side. I think I might make this asymmetrical. I'm very tempted to actually have this go out farther and connect down there. I wonder if that would look okay. If we do that, I probably have to do... Well, we're back far enough. That might be okay. I might have to make it a little bit different. Rather than the exact same angle, maybe we'll make it the steeper one. That might work. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I know that I'm going to need the space, though. So I know I'm going to need this space for manufacturers. And they are... Well, you know what? That'll fit over here, won't it? What I'm thinking is going to have to happen is I'm going to have to put the inputs on the manufacturer. These facing this way. So along here. And then we may have to use um, this outside space here to send stuff into them. And then we'll have, similar to like the one over here, maybe we'll have like four along here which could be cool. I don't know if the manufacturer's inputs match up with the walls. They might. Yeah, they look like they do. I'd imagine they designed them like that on purpose. Yeah. So we'd have two walls here and have stuff go into them that way. I don't know how I'm going to handle this other one. This other one might have to have something coming up. I'm not sure. Either through the floor or like maybe along here. It depends on what it's making. We'll have to see. Have to see. So really, I think the only thing I have to figure out is where the plastic is going to come in. That's all being made in this building. That's good. None of, uh, just the cable. So the only thing, so yeah, the computers I think are not going to be the thing that we make here. I don't even think, yeah, we don't do either one of those here either. So this is going to be a bit of a, a, a strange beast for a little while. Um, it might be time, you know, to start thinking about plastic and trains. Axiom, hello, hello, how's it going? Oh, I got to clean this up too. Um, max consumption. We're doing okay. I don't need to go and add more power. We start adding trains, though. What did I say the room was? 400? A little under 400 megawatts? What's a train station going to cost us for power? 50. Yeah. So two of those gets 100 megawatts real quick. Plus the trains actually... Take power too, I think. Oh yeah, so we need to expand power before we do trains. Okay. Let's 
So right now, all this coal is coming in this way along the bottom. It might be worth it to switch the direction and bring the coal in straight from over there. I also have enough um, coal to do other things. We could send the coal upstairs to do like explosives and stuff. So like we've got the um, assemblers here. And we can do things like black powder, which is sulfur and coal. Noblisks, which is black powder and steel pipe. So if I can get sulfur coming in here too, AI limiters, copper sheet, and quick wire. We should do like a computer, fa like a circuit board and AI limiter. They're both copper sheets. If we set that up at the Caterium location, then we can do that. That's probably the next. The first standalone factory is probably going to be over there. That way we could bring stuff back here easy enough. We also have to work out where we're going to make mod uh, modular engines. This is the part in the game where it's like you've got seven different things that you could do and trying to decide which is the best way to do it. Motors, rubber, and plastic. Yeah. I think we need to get a train bringing plastic and rubber back to this biome. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, and none of the seven different ways are wrong. You're right, Sandy. It's, it's totally... Totally the way to go. It feels like more of a facility now. I know it's still a work in progress, but I like the mix of um, working around things. I wonder if I should add that back there as well. I feel like that's probably something I should do. Again, it's such an easy thing to delete stuff in this game. You forget when you're a Minecraft player that you can totally just add and delete stuff. So it's even with the top window. Right. Forget about that. So this side does not have the slope that the other side does. And that's why I'm trying to create some cool windows and stuff here. I think we can probably move this along just to be consistent with it. rough out of shape it would probably make sense that even though we don't need to this would continue all the way to the edge here that would probably go all, all the way to there be my guess I think it has to be here I think there's stuff underneath it yeah and you know what I think I prefer um, the roof rather than the wall.
And that gives us a little bit more room in here too. Can't complain about that. For future things. So something else I was thinking about would be like, we could use this place to actually have like some external belts. So if I had another manufacturer up here, we could have belts going up here and into the wall. And that could be like one, one layout that we could use for stuff like that. Especially if we're bringing stuff in from there where we're making like circuit boards and stuff. Like we could bring those over this way. And maybe we could do the computers in this area and the, um, the modular frames in the other. I just want to have them for inventory purposes, right? I don't know how to handle this shape. I feel like I want to put that on both sides. I guess this isn't connected either. So we have all this space, basically I had up until about here. So we have this nice flat area that we can add on to um, and use. And I think having a couple of awesome sinks up here would be cool because then you could also have this stick out through the top of the building, which would look pretty cool. Maybe we have those like in the middle here, up on a platform, because then you could see it from down here. You'd be looking at like couple of those next to one another should be kind of neat yeah like if we had them side by side maybe that could be kind of a cool centerpiece having two of those um, although I guess it's gonna look different if I turn it around Yeah. Sometimes I don't like that the machines are asymmetrical. A little tricky. Now, is this the right height to attach to this? No. Not really. So this is going to have to have a whole other thing on it. Speaking of awesome things, do we have our tickets yet? We do. Oh, do I want that or do I want... Now that we know we're going to have to go do some power stuff. Want to use foundations. Water pipes. Well, I don't have enough for quarter pipes, so if customizer. This does give us all kinds of different wall textures for five tickets. Awesome thing is where you put stuff you don't need, get tickets back and buy things. Yeah. A uh, couple of awesome things. Yeah. So this is the awesome sink right there. That's it. The awesome sink. Awesome stands for something. I don't remember what it is. And so when you are, all this stuff is getting ground into powder. Like it's, it's basically just like turning into raw material. And then we get fix it coupons. And when you have enough points, you get a new coupon. And then you take the coupons and you go to the awesome shop, which is this little kiosk. And you can buy some of it's functional, like some of it's like, Wall mounts for conveyor belts, floor holes, power wall modules, pipes, that kind of stuff. Uh, Sweet Sandy says the awesome shop is anti-waste effort for stress testing of materials on exoplanets. That is one heck of an acronym. I'm really impressed that they came up with that. I might get the pipes and then the walls. 
Oh no, the walls are five. I guess we sit on this for a second. I want to get those. Will this stay in the in my cart? Yes. Okay, good. So we need a lot of stuff. Seventeen tickets. Where's the sun? The midday. Yeah. So I think the next thing is to go out and check the power. I should build a truck. So I can bring back a really good load of um, material. Can these guys run on biofuel? I think they can. They can. What color do we want the truck, folks? While I get some more gas, what uh, what color? Cast your votes in chat. Pink, purple. <laughs> Pink with three exclamation points. Oh man, that's funny. I'm trying to think about a good truck transformer. I know, um, is it overhaul? No. Transformer truck. Obviously, Optimus Prime is a truck, but I don't want to do that. The Brawn was one of the ones that I had that was the images of a, of a truck. Um, that's a cool image. Hound was a Jeep. He was green. Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus is just like the reverse colors of Optimus Prime. He was like um, white and red and stuff. Uh, let me just bring, put this in the other browser. Ultra Magnus. Yeah, he's just... No, white and red. The blue and white and red. What about... I mean, obviously Optimus Prime comes up as a top search. Was there a fire truck? Inferno. Moving on. I forget about Inferno. I mean, it's kind of the same colors we've already got. Uh, dump truck. I think the dump trucks were that were they were Decepticons. Yeah, Devastator. Devastator stuff. Constructicon stuff. Wheeljack was a pickup with a camper. Wheeljack was a pickup, really? In Gen One, I thought he was like a Lamborghini. Or like a sports car, like a rally car. I didn't think he was a pickup truck. Hound was a Jeep. Hound would be good for a tractor. Um, RC was pink, yeah. What's, uh, was it... Hall... Braun? Braun. Ron was a dump truck? No, he was just another Jeep. He was a pretty dumb looking transformer, as a matter of fact. <laughs> really not the best. Really, really not the best.
Oh, there we go. Uh, those are not the names. Those are not the names. Ironhide, Prowl, Jazz, Wheeljack, Brawn, Mirage. Mirage was like an F1. Ratchet was the ambulance. Ironhide was a van. Ironhide was the, the minivan. There's no pickup truck. There's, Ironhide was a pickup truck in the movies. There was more than these guys in Gen 1, surely. Surely, surely. Mighty shady. I really like the Wheeljack toy. It was pretty cool. Why don't we go with... Um, I mean, Ultra Mag... I can't do... I can't do three colors. They only do two in the game. I'm trying to stick to Autobots as well. Autobots. Who's the little orange guy? Anybody know the little orange guy? Let's do orange and blue. Orange and blue. That'll work. That only took an eon. Orange and blue. I guess I'll just grab one of these things that we're not using. I really wish this would um, select the right one. And then blue. Really muddy orange. Sure. So we're going to get uh, a good inventory of, I think, plastic and rubber, or maybe just plastic. Rubber, we seem to be doing okay. Yeah, we're not doing much for rubber. I think we should probably bring the plastic back. Yeah, we'll do plastic. Thought it was going to be a uh, trail breaker in... The Michael Bay movies, yeah. There's a couple things I I I really do like what they've done with the Transformers. The way that they look is good. The movies have not been great. Um, the Rise of the Beasts, Optimus Prime was the classic, like GMC truck, like the box cab, and Bumblebee looked good. Um, they do all kinds of stuff in that movie, right? Um, the Bubble Me movie was good with um, Haley Steinfeld. She's awesome anyway, but it was a really good film. Um, really fun and entertaining. So we're going to go out and we're going to also expand power. This is all probably happening after my break because I've got to get organized. Yes. So I'm going to need to build another... Let's just say... Three fuel gens. I don't know if I can. I may have to build another um, extractor. I don't think I will. Refinery. 
We don't need more refineries. We just need more power. And eventually I'm going to have to start thinking about where we want to put um, railway lines, etc. I might mark a couple spots on the way back. So there's our new stuff. We have marked two pipes now. That's great. So it's a really, we are in a really good position to expand fuel power a little bit. Oh, I may have to build a refinery. Let's make sure we can do four refineries in case we need them. I'll need to bring in a lot of copper sheets. So for anybody that's new to the game, you've got this, you open up your menu and you go over to the right-hand side, This the, the, the right-hand side of the screen kind of grays out. You've got access to this um, to-do list. So you can add things in here. So I don't need summer sloop. Expand fuel power temporarily. Uh, I need Mercer spheres. Uh, I need plastic truck fill up and marks path for rails. And I still need some sheets. Also, make sure you hit the X, not escape, because otherwise it doesn't save. It's really annoying. But then we've got this little to-do list on the right-hand side. Plus, we have a um, parts list that we need to bring with us. So we need to get more copper sheets. We can come with some of those. I'm going to dump a few things out of my inventory. So the tickets can go uploaded. The chainsaw can go uploaded. Actually, I may want to chop down some stuff, too. We're going to need some plates, probably. Don't think I need pipes. Extra concrete. Again, we have access to some stuff in our... Um... Fine, says Loki. I bought the game. Nice! Where'd you pick it up? Did you grab it on um, Steam or on Epic? Amazing. I think you're really going to enjoy it. The amount of hours that I've sunk into this game. I mean, granted, I'm a content creator, but still, like, just gameplay alone. I've played off off stream, too. You know, the fact that I paid, I mean, early bird pricing for it, and I think, gosh, I don't think that I paid, I don't think I paid $50. I think I paid 35 or something, 40 maybe. I might need a valve. We should have everything we need. Rotor stators, motors, plastic, rubber, gas. I think we're good. Question is, what's the fastest way out there? That hill is going to be a rough go. So we're going to go probably up into the right. And we'll go that way. I need to figure out where that sulfur nose is too. I think they changed the noise that the trucks make. Seems a lot quieter. Oh, they don't knock down trees anymore. That's good to know. Anybody else that's a, a been a player for a while notice that the trucks are quieter? They're way quieter than the tractor. And they are faster. They handle hills a lot better too, I think. Yeah, it'll be a bit of a road trip. We, um... I'll probably have to take my break while I'm out there. Oh yeah, this is way better than the tractor. It drives better too, it's easier to steer. 
the tractor was all, almost like it was too quick to corner for how slow it drove, which is really weird. Although this doesn't corner very well. Now, where is that sulfur node? Oh, it's not up until around the corner. It's way up here. I think it actually might be a good idea to start clearing some way here. So we are going to make sure switch to single mode. Correct. Switch to area mode. It's a uh, mode area mode single. That's what I want. I don't want to clear-cut the whole place, I just want to create a path. I don't have to worry about driving over stuff. The headlights on the truck are really cool too. So is it somewhere near here? Yeah, it's up behind me. Where is that sulfur node? Hundred and eighty five meters. It must be up on top of the hill. Take the free slug. It has to be up there. Yeah, it's totally right on top of us. Okay. That's not going to be as easy to get and use as I was hoping. So I'm thinking the train is going to go along... Oops. Going to go along the shore. Probably in a nice straight line. Typically where most people put it, kind of about where the my power lines are. Lots of lifts. Yeah, you're probably right, Sandy. We may have to widen our little bridge here. It's a lot of stuff to drive around. Glad I don't have to do this all the time. I mean, we are probably just wide enough. Yep, yeah, would not want to want to do this in real life. So we are not... Okay, we do have one built out here already. Okay. Well, since it's dark, uh, I will uh, go on a break. Y'all can hang out here with the refineries and the sunrise and moonrise and stuff. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes to set up another couple of uh, these fuel plants and fill up the truck with um, with uh, plastic. Cool. All right. Give me a few minutes, folks. I will be right back.
All right, let's see what we can get done here. We are capable. We're only doing 20 per minute and at 50%. So we could do 40 and this takes 20. So I could double this if I have enough happening on the other end. So this is making 10, this is making 20, so that's 30. So I would have to make another refinery. I believe another refinery will give me an option to actually make just a straight up residual. No, I don't have the alt recipe for that yet. Okay. Residual fuel, heavy oil residue. Right, that's that recipe. So I basically have to make more plastic and more rubber. Yeah. Food oil. So that makes 40 and polymer resin. Okay, wait a minute. So we get fuel out of this or we get residual fuel. Petroleum coke. No. Regular fuel is 60 crude oil to 40. That'll do another two hour. Rubber gives you more. Yeah, rubber gives you 20. Plastic gives you 10. Um, but then this gives you 40 fuel, and I just have to sink this. And we already have a sink out here. I don't have to build a new one. There's already a sink here. Taking the overflow of the of the rubber, because this is all going to be full. Right? So before I forget, we can fill up the, uh, the truck. It's the wrong place. Good that we made the truck blue. It's going to be our mobile storage for plastic. I should probably just put all this in here. Like, we can move a lot of stuff with these trucks, which is great. Extra points. Um, I like that one. You can use the polymer to make plastic with water. Cool. So what I want to do is figure out what we're doing for oil. And this, I think, is well, this is doing 120 per minute. This is only using 30. And this is only using 30. So we have enough room to add another one of these guys onto this. I think I might move this guy and have our refineries flipped around. And so we'll do a couple, of, I'll do at least one more fuel refinery and then sync the results, right? So if I, if I make fuel, I can do one more of those. That'll be 60. This is taken 30. And this is taken 30. So there's the 120. So I can add one of these guys onto the end here. That'll make fuel and polymer resin. I can send that right to the sink. Then this guy, I can just move down the line. And we should be okay. So what I'm going to do is add on this. And this is, can take up to 300. So really, I guess I could just... Uh, 
let's just do this first, I guess. This is going to be doing fuel again, and that'll connect into this fuel line right there, so that's easy. We'll have to bring it around from the back. So the main input has to come down here, so this is just going to have to go up and over, and that's not a big deal. I think it's four, two, three, four. I guess there has to be a higher height difference for this to go and look fancy and nice. It's fine. is already in the right spot, although do I have this backwards? Nope. Facing the right way. So this You're going to make fuel and polymer resin. The output of the polymer resin will have to go into that somehow. So I think we just have to add another merger. I really don't like the way that the, the hitboxes work now. They really do. They really could have done a better job with that. Doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, that's going to go out and that's going to get squished. Uh, and then the fuel has got to come out now. Had I been thinking, I should have just ran it through there. But uh, we will do it the other way. Uh, what is this? This is residual. Right, that's getting eaten up in there. And this is just going to go up this way. Mm -mm -mm. 
Uh, thanks, by the way, for your tips on how to handle power connections. I ended up using wall outlets to run power via the floor, which really improved the look of my factory. Oh, you're welcome. That's cool. Happy to help. I mean, watching other people play the game, it's like Minecraft. Like, you're going to get... Everybody's brain works a little bit different, so you're going to get different tips from different people. Some people like the clutter. Some people like uh, gaming out, just want stuff everywhere. And then people like me, I want to build on a theme, so it's more challenging. It takes me longer, but it's more fun for me. So there's all kinds of different ways to to do stuff. Um, I prefer these over the other mounts, so we're just going to go... Uh, to go to here. I just don't think this is going to be pretty in any way, shape, or form. You're like you can't it says you can't build it there because it's encroaching on that part it's just it's weird eventually we're gonna have to make a pipe like hot bar Fix-it pipelines can contain any fluid including the water necessary for coal-powered generators Note, water does not flow upwards by itself. While water extractors provide some lift to truly defy gravity, consider the use of pipeline pumps. I guess it's just because I built that up high. We got a queue. That's interesting. They said one of the things that's coming in the next free update for Satisfactory is going to be um, straight mode for pipes. Currently don't have it. So this is now pumping out 40 fuel per minute. This is pumping out 20 fuel per minute. So that is... Ah, but I can increase that if I wanted to. Oh no, I can't because it's only getting 30 residue. Yeah, so this has to be at this level. That's fine. Also, that's a weird angle, but fine. This is also making fuel. That's working as it should. 30. Um, that should be plenty for the overflow. At the most, this is making 20 and 20. Actually, I should probably increase this just in case. We'll make this a 120 belt. And so now, um, we now have, what did I say, 60 fuel? 40 plus 20 is 60 fuel. This takes 20. Yeah. So we can add one more right next to all of this.
should be in line. Now we just have to hook this up to the network. And we'll move this to the edge. Once upon a time, I used to fuss about the rotation on the... Um, power poles and we are going to connect you probably here Should still be good. A little messy. That should have taken our power up to over 2,000 because, again, we're getting that boost from the Summer Sloop power augmenter. And now I just need to carbon steel that's the crude oil yellow is fuel and then we get the polymer resin doing a whole lot of nothing although we could make it into plastic if we wanted to but not something I'm worried about right now and we should be good one more ticket for the road. Cool. You play with the creatures on passive? Yeah, I've got them on retaliate, so they will fight back if I, if I fight them, but right now they're not doing that. Um, let's just make this a little bit wider. And I really need to think about where we're going to put a train station. My guess for a good spot for a train station, it's probably going to be temporary at first. So it's less about the station, it's more about where we want to put the train line. But there's the other oil node right there. I do a scan for oil. There's one there, one over there, and one over there. You can see them on the map. Did they remove one? There should be one over there. Pure. Normal. Normal. There should be another pure one over there think um so a good spot for a train station would probably be like above this i get the thing yes so anything we do in here i would build the frac the factory probably in this space the train station could actually be underneath it be kind of fun so really, down this line is where you'd want your trains to go. And I'm going to have them up high enough that it's not really going to matter too much. But essentially, straight down this way would how I would want to run the trains. Well, that's a little bit tricky because of the way that the grid is. Hmm. 
very much where I have them in the other playthrough. But I think it's on the Devastator grid. I don't think it's on the World grid. Yeah. So it's not going to follow the beach unless you get off grid. Interesting. The oil node is still there? That's good to know. Maybe I should map that while we're out here. This is normal again, I think. Temporary uh, rubber plastic fuel power. Pure. I'm really familiar with this area because this is where my power plant is in the other playthrough. And there is one more. Not sure why it's not coming up. I guess our scanner range is short at this stage of the game. There it is. And that's another pure one. I think it's 1800 altogether that you can get out of this. Or 1200. Reconnaissance complete. One of the, the big alpha shells. Six bugs at once. Yeah, the scanner range is far, so I'm not sure what's going on. point turn <laughs> this is more comfortable so now we can take this back we'll at least have a lot of plastic so if we need to make more computers we can manually anyway I'm trying to remember the things that I need the heavy modular frames for. It's really difficult to um, not want to just start another factory, like start the logistics for like Caterium and um, Copper and stuff like that. When really what I should do is finish up the 
the wheel jack build. I find like I like to do things in stages. Whoa. Now there's always a higher road that I miss here. You don't realize how big the trucks are until you start to walk by some of the beasts or drive by the beast and you're just like, man, this is a big, it's a big piece of kit. So I don't want to take the train down along here. I want to bring it out around the corner. Three wheels? Why not? Oh! Well, not as not as shelf stable <laughs> as the tractor. Capable of faster speeds. I don't know that I have any ramps over this way to get back up. I don't think I do. So I'm going to park this, I think, around the back. close to our plastic our plastic bins actually that's a kind of a cool idea now that I'm thinking about this it would be neat to actually have like almost uh, an access point here like what if because we can paint like the roads and stuff it would be kind of cool to actually have like a parking lot here for certain things uh, we can just grab a bunch of this, though. Plop that in here. And then... Oops. Take another little bit over here. Circuit boards. This was plastic... Circuit boards are going directly in. I think this was plastic. And so what do we need? We're missing... Oh, I put them both in the wrong thing. That needs plastic as well, right? Yeah. We have lots now. And I just need to top up on cable. Just to kind of keep that stuff going in the background. Uh, I'm not too worried about this. This looks like it is out of modular frames again. And I need to start moving this stuff out of the way so we can actually figure out a permanent position for this. That's cool. Put my wood and my leaves up in the bio converter. I like that you don't destroy bushes now with the trucks. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree, Sandy. I think that's a good idea, too. Uh, leafy. Th oh, no, not that. Crap. Stop it. What do we want? Try to stick with the Transformers colorful themes. Why not, right? Oh, 
Nice. So if I was to continue to um, pave this place, I run into all kinds of problems up here. So this might end up being just like a higher plateau. And this uh, ramp actually might exit straight instead of coming back down. I was thinking about that the other day. So I think I'd like to give this double um, awesome sink thing a try. So I can make that look good. I also need to figure out what we're going to put up here, if anything. Because we, we have the space. Um, I should also think about how the coal is going to come in. We might want to move that across to the side here. Yeah. More manufacturers? I could try to put more manufacturers up here. I feel like we've got the space. It would be taller. Um, trying to think about what we need to build up here. I don't think... I think what I want to do, what I think would be the, the make the most sense, would be to have a train station in the, in the air up here. Because we've got something there. We've got nodes there. We've got concrete here. I feel like having a train station maybe even attached to the back of this would be cool. Or at least at this level. Because this is about the height that I would want to run the trains at anyway, just because you're above everything. Or close to being above everything. Uh, especially in this biome, like, because you're really high. That would clear that, I think. Um... We would clear most of this area all the way over to there. So having a train station up here would be cool. I just don't know about the back end of the building. I don't want to have a door back here. I don't need a door back here. And I hadn't thought much about the shape of this thing. So I don't know whether we're just going to continue this and have it be like another big trapezoid thing or whether we're going to have more angled... Um, windows because that just kind of cuts down on the space so what I think I might want to do is keep the shape but just increase the height so I might want to go I don't know I don't think I need to go that high But I can see that being kind of what we do at the back of it. And then we could drop it down again. So it would be like one, two, two of those. Although that's not a huge amount of space either. I think that could look cool. And then we just go straight down from there. And maybe we cut in lower or have a support or something like that it could easily come down and connect at this point we'd finish up with a different sort of look to it but maybe have another beam or something Mm 
something like that could look cool. And that would just give us this extra space up here. This is too low, so that's kind of like misleading my eye. This would be about where it would be. So we'd have this little overhang for a little character. And to match up with the these guys. And the thing is, like, there's this open space here. There is um, space enough behind this that we could put more smelters if we wanted to. Then also, I want to fit the hub up here, too. And the hub needs, like, a clear launching space. So I feel like having the hub up here in the middle with the ability to launch off of the back would be cool. So maybe... Like maybe the wall really is sort of here and then this as like a a little bit thicker Right, so maybe there's something like that along the back. Why it won't let me zoop down, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's really annoying. So that still gives a little bit of room to walk by or move by in some way. But I thought that if, if this was up here and this is where the hub was, then we could bridge out to a train station that would go over this rock and that would basically eliminate the fact that there's this giant rock that we can't move, right? And I feel like then the train could go straight out this way and go right and go up towards the oil. You can sort of see like a little... I'm not sure if we can do this while I'm flying. There's a little platform in the distance. Like, that would be around where the train would go. And then... That would be up... Up over the trees, sort of. We may have to go a little higher. That's fine. I'm f cool with this for like the, the hub location and then it's just a matter of like how do we position the awesome sinks so that they look cool. Just going back and forward or more of a loop. Um, I would eventually want it to be a loop. Back and forward trains are okay early on. We could do a back and forth train on an offshoot track but I prefer having like um, two lane traffic. As long as you have the ability to switch, that's usually the, the best way. The problem with the two engine trains is that they often will take the shortest distance and that may mean traveling on the other side of the track that you want them to. So it's usually better to just set up like a two way. I would do a one way train if it was not part of the main network, if it was just like going from point A to point B and it was not connected to other things. It was just those two connections and that was it. Two way train, totally, totally fine. Yes. So if this was across here, Don't know how 
how far that came out. That might be too far. So then this kind of gives us something cool to kind of jut out here. And then these things going in could go into something special. I think that's kind of cool. I may keep the coal coming in this side. I don't know. I'd like to clean it up a bit. Right now it's a little rough. Uh, I could also clean this up. How would I want to handle the concrete? I would imagine it would be better to bring it all along here first. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so that's a lot tidier there, right? Sort of goes along the side of the road. So there's little things like that that I think we can do. Uh oh. That was not from just now, that was from before. Interesting. So I feel like I want to keep some kind of topographical changes. Kind of cool. Don't know about this one. Sort of makes it like a path here, which is nice. Sort of feels like a hierarchy. I don't know. I'm not sure about covering stuff up. I feel like having a, a lot of platforms is one thing, but then starting to cover up the countryside just ends up being this giant project that I don't know if I really want to get into. That was too far. Probably going to be three wide again, would be my guess. That does give a very, very flat face to the back of this, though, so I may have to come up with some ways to make this more interesting. But that would be the height, I think, that I would want. Sweet, Sandy, thanks for being awesome. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. I think that would be solid, though. Like, I don't think it would be windowed. I think we would have maybe some lights on it. I guess the back would maybe have a window because we wouldn't want to block all the sunlight because the sun kind of arcs on that side. So we'd want to have some windows here. Uh, or it could just be open to the air. Like, we could have, like, this open kind of mezzanine and have the windows back here. That would be 
That would be cool. I think I might just take the leap and move the hub. And then also see where an awesome sink is going to be in here. So, like, if we want this to go this way, I need to paint the middle here just so I can see what's going on. Like, if we want to put one of these guys up here. Face it that way. Nudge it back to the point where we can put at least a wall in front of it. And it might be worth doing that. And then I'd want to go probably one more or a half meter more. And then see if I can put another one on the other side. Oh, right. That's fine. They only have the one input. That's that's fine. You can actually get them pretty close. Right, so I just think that that would be kind of a cool thing to maybe have at the top there. It took them three hours to start with the boss today, yeah. See, like, that's cool. I think that looks kind of neat. It looks like the inner workings of a factory, and we could frame it up and, like, not have it be so exposed. And that would give us dual things. The only problem is that it takes a huge amount of space up here. Right? And I would, I would want them to be higher because I would want these things to stick out of the roof. So I probably want it to be like two meters higher, right? Like if this was stuck out of the roof at this level. That would look pretty cool, right? Actually, I may want to have to move them forward. There may have to be something up here. Um, night is upon us. Break again. You're right. You're right, Sandy. The question here is like, is it going to look supported? And am I willing to dump all that space just for something that looks cool? And, 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 how the heck do I get up there? Outside of maybe like a cool hypertube? Um, I would say I'd have to use these. And probably, like, something like that. Feel like that could look cool. We'd make them red, probably. But then we'd have to duck under whatever was happening up here, right? So, like, that's another reason why I want to have them higher. Anyway, I'm sticking to those bricks because Sandy said so. So, once again, I'm going to step away for a few minutes, refresh my coffee, grab myself a little stretch. You should too. And hey, while you're out there, tell a friend. Let them know about the stream. You can go to Joel Duggan on Twitter, Joel Duggan on Instagram, share it around, and I will see you in just a few.
All right, let's see what kind of damage we can do. It's not looking too bad, I have to say. I think it might be time to move the hub. Certainly I can move this other stuff. And I can move these too. So let's do that. I need some more manual storage bins. We don't have a lot of manual stuff. We also don't have a lot of lighting for nighttime. So this is the garbage bin. This is the stuff that goes back into storage. So that's our like input bin for that. I think we could have like some other manual stuff up here. So why don't we... Hmm. I'm trying to think if I want these like right at the front. I might want them a little bit farther back. Give myself maybe a foundation. Uh, or part of one. At least a walkway. So that's what, half a foundation? And then I said I wanted it to be two meters taller. Although if I do that, we're not going to see them at the top. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I don't raise the roof up here. I don't think we're going to have room for manufacturers up here. I think that might be a, a poor plan. So maybe we don't raise this thing. Maybe we just extend it. that way these things only have to go up by what did I say? Two meters? Three maybe? That might look sturdier from down here, too. Yeah. So I'll do another one of these, and I want it to be at least that far back. Yeah, and then if we looked up top, they would stick out like that. Maybe we can just expand it but not have a roof up here? Like we could just have these things be sort of like spikes, I guess? Does Wheeljack have anything like that on him? He's got sort of like these headpiece bits. Sort of work like that. Like maybe this could be a flat surface here. Right, so this could still stick up, but it's going to have like this cool dip in the middle. Good night, Sandy. Thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it looks a little funny because it's sort of symmetrical, but sort of not. But I like it. We can maybe decorate around it and make it look cool. 
We could just face them both the same way, but I think that would be more difficult. Ah, so back to back, I did not put those in the middle. Whoops. I meant to do this. I think I got those close enough. Right, and then we don't need this. Why is there only two? Oh, I had put four, that's why. I think I did that close enough? Yeah, I can't put them any closer than that. Okay, well, let's hook one up see what we got up here yeah that looks pretty good you also have those car door wings yeah you're right I don't I was thinking about putting those on there too he's got these kind of like cool fins on his on his back yeah so at least for now one thing we could do is I could bring this feed up and I could split it here the only thing about having this a little bit off needs power. Where was the other one? There we go. So this will do an aesthetic job, but it'll also solve one of our other problems. Yeah, that's dumb that, like, that is reading as encroaching, and it is not. And I, I really dislike that. So we still have this bottleneck here. What I need to do is, is have a, a separate line back down there. And these things are a lot of power too. They're like 25 megawatts, I want to say. 30, jeez. I mean, we've got some overhead, but I don't want to get in the habit of doing that. So those will not really, you can't really see much motion. A little bit of steam and smoke coming from them. Um, but we could potentially have this look a little bit cooler.
That's off the edge. Is that off the edge here too? Yeah, it is. Might be worth covering up some of this anyway. So I was thinking go up like this. Those are the same sort of shapes that we've been working with throughout the design is going to echo a little bit here. Careful not to delete the wrong thing. We're going to wrap this up however we want. I'm not crazy about these being visible. So we could hide some of this. And we can make this look a little bit more substantial as well. Have some layers to it. But if that had a light in there, and if it was like glowing blue or something, maybe have some technical stuff happening. Put like a fake elevator in there. there could be, we could do some motion in there to make things work. Like a, there's probably enough room for a floor hole. Maybe. Maybe not. The radar tower looks good. Yeah, so like on the top, they stick out, which is nice. So that's cool. There's a missing piece there. We'd need to beef this up so it looks a little bit more sturdy, but I think that helps hide the size of them. It actually feels a little bit more, um, I'm not sure what the word is. Right, and if that's what we're doing, we could have maybe even a door here. Although, I don't know what we would do about this. This could easily be a floor hole, too. Um, don't think I'd want to move that. I don't think I'd want it over here. I mean, this is going to be here, so I guess I should think about that too. Because what we could do is have like a an actual top level. One more. So left-hand door would line up probably exactly where we'd want. I would just have to figure out 
what to do with that. And this does not have to be white. This could also be part of the red. Or we could also have it be really shiny. I don't know about that. I think maybe even just like a maybe carpet steel. It's a good contrast, maybe. Go with that for now. I think these would be red. We might end up with red here. That's kind of fun. This has like a quick sketch. It's what it might be. And I could add the same sort of details like this kind of cool angular support. We could 100% do that up here, right? Come on. starts to look like it's all part of the same design. I like the red and the dark. It's kind of a nice combo too. Not that I want it to look evil, but it sort of does. If we have room for a light, it might not let us. I'm trying to remember the best way to do this. Probably like that. Just as a proof of concept. Oh, that's the max distance for nudging. Whoops. Well, there we go. That may not be the best way to do that. I might have to look up a better way. There might have to be lights on both sides rather than one down the middle. You can put these a lot closer together now, which is nice. So weirdly, they've given us 
larger hitboxes on the machines, but smaller hitboxes on some large pieces as well. At least you can daisy chain the lights. Oh, sort of. Let's just make you a bus. Big, big power pole. Ah. Uh, Theratisher, I think I'm saying your name right. Hello, welcome in. Thanks for saying hello. Yeah, we'll have to play with that and see what we can come up with. Um, but that kind of gives me the idea of at least putting the hub up in this position. I think we might have to go out a little bit farther. I don't know if I want it to be central, but we'll start there and see what else I can come up with. So I think it's time to see how this might be moved. So we've got the MAM to move, equipment workshop, and a bunch of this stuff too. Don't need that there. I can probably delete that as well, because we now have overflow happening at this end, so we can probably get rid of all of it now. Flood high on the sidewall. Uh, ripcord, yeah, that could be a good way to do it too. Yeah, so there's a floodlight for folks that are new to the game. Uh, there's one of these guys. Um, like that. And we could have that be like in here, but facing... Like I could face it this way. I could have it... Like I could shine it in from right to left. We could experiment with that. Right now it was just a matter of getting these quickly functioning and then going from there. Uh, but let's see what the hub might look like. That is just enough space. I want the flying thing to be out the back side, though. Do I want that to be higher? This, again, it's temporary. I'm not really too worried about it. So we need it to be farther out for sure. Give ourselves some space. This is where the ship takes off from. It's not a symmetrical thing, is it? That's the middle. Uh, unfortunately, I was expecting that to be on this side. That's fine. Hub. So that could be kind of cool if we can work it into the roof in a meaningful way. So we could maybe have some cool roof shape that comes out over top here. But then maybe somehow forks. Uh, don't really have any triangles, but we could do some finagling. But for now, I could just do like a half foundation. So something like this, but obviously with much more design and purpose, could be really cool. And I think 
think I like this shape too. So this gives us a lot of room, but I don't know what for. That's the other thing. Well, let's start to think about where we actually want our manufacturers to go and how we're going to handle this side. I've got a decent rough thought for the back of the building now. So I'll add in this side here. backed up and looked at this in a bit. Yeah, I'm all right with that as, a, as an outline. That's pretty good. Now, this side I'm quite happy with on the right. Right? Left. No, the left. Technically, I guess that's the front. So I like what we've done over here. Uh, it's a little plain underneath the lip, but um, I do... I do like it. I'm also, I'm realizing that this is going to be a bit of a, a problem because we don't have that at the front. So I need to work on that. Um, but I like this kind of level of detail. I think that's pretty good. So I, I think I maybe want to have some of the stuff on the other side open rather than closed off. So we'll see what I can do over there. And that really is just going straight back. I think I like the small windows. I think I like the high windows, so we may not want to do double windows. But in here, see if I can actually use the walkways I took some time to design. I feel like it might be better to have the double windows rather than the high windows. I think it might be better to actually go right down to the ground here. And so if we do that, it's probably worth it to just go all the way down. And weirdly, it won't let us... Yeah, like it won't, won't let me do that. Which is weird, because it'll let me do this. But not the bottom. And it's probably because of this, maybe? Nope, it's not going to let me. So, maybe we have to skip the bottom one and go with that. And then we have to put a top one. That's so weird. Like, I don't know what the rules are. I don't know what the rules are. I'm sure it's got something to do with the way that's classified. What should I use trains for? Are they used for like transporting a large amount of iron to a distant factory uh, to make materials? Absolutely. Uh, rapidity, that's 100% what you could use trains for. Um, the thing about trains and what to think about with trains is your throughput. So um, basically a train... I don't know if I have enough. Let me see if I can make a train real quick. Ah. Uh, we haven't actually made a train yet in this save. So, freight car. So they look empty, but when you put something in them, they fill up, right? And so this has, um, I think it's 32 spots. One, two, three, four... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so there's 32 spots in here. So if 
your things stack to 100, then you could potentially fit 3,200 um, uh, items in that train car. And then you multiply that by how long, or you divide that by how long it takes your train to get from point A to point B. And if you're pumping out more than 3,200 iron ingot, let's say, in the time it takes for this to get back and forth, then you need another car. Because your train station will have, let's say, 6,400. And you'll need two cars to empty the thing in one trip, right? And so the thing to think about, though, is, is what you're actually transporting. So iron to iron ingots is a one-to-one. -one. But something like uh, copper to wire is a vast increase in your production. So you don't want to put screws in a train. You don't want to put wire on a train. I don't think you want to put quick wire on a train. But something like Caterium starts at like a 45 ore and ends up as a 15 ingot. Like it's 45 to 15. It reduces the volume. So you'd want to put the ingots on the train if you have to move them, right? Um, really what you want to do, I find, is um, either make a decision to be bringing raw materials in via train or have a train coming up to a factory. Like let's say the factory is building motors, right? Finished product. Train loads up with motors and then the, drops the motors off at your turbo motor factory or something. So that's usually a good way to do it too because then you're gonna get a real bang for your buck because the amount of energy that you're using for the train is produce, is moving a bunch of stuff that's all being combined down. Like this whole factory, most of what it does is make motors, right? So we've got stators and rotors coming from steel and iron making one, you know, like four motors a minute, two motors, yeah, four motors per minute. That's the whole thing, right? So it would be better for me to come to this factory and take the motors out than it would be for me to grab other stuff, right? Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. So like I said, I wanted to open this up and I feel like this has got a weird, it's got a weird vibe to it. Um, this needs to be sealed up up here. So I didn't do the slant roof here and I feel like I maybe should have. How many did I do? Goes flat, 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 and then two ramps. Change my too many menus. I find at the end of my streams, I start to get like menu fatigue and I start to forget like which ones are which. So one, two, three, and then flat, flat. So if I did that, it does reduce this and it would virtually get rid of that window, which would solve a problem, I guess. I don't mind the fact that there's no windows in here. We, the skylight kind of makes up for it and this does not feel awful. And it's the same height. Or it should be the same height. Yeah, so I can get rid of all this. Oh, is it gonna clip these? Maybe that's why I didn't do it. Oh, it, that's why I didn't. Uh, I can have both. What am I doing? Yeah, I don't need to decide. I can have both. So that will change the profile. Uh, do I need to do it all the way down? I guess I need to do it for consistency inside. That whole thing is visible on the other side. It's just, it's, it's weird when you're trying to do like an asymmetrical move. Uh, Rapidity says, ah, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to know. I'm trying to make heavy modular frames, but I don't want to build an entirely new factory making the required materials. Right, so with heavy modular frames, the one thing that I would suggest 
is build your screws on site if you're using a recipe that has screws. I would recommend using the one that doesn't have screws. Um, have you done any hard drive hunting for alternate recipes at all? But heavy modular frames, the regular recipe is pipes, beams, and screws, and these guys. So, yeah, if you're going to make the screws on site, you might as well make the modular frames on site because they're just nothing but iron. So you're probably going to be using iron to make the screws anyway. And you're going to need rods to make the screws if you're doing vanilla recipes. Uh, but then the steel and the encased beams you could bring in from somewhere else if you wanted to. Um, it depends on how many you want to make, right? That's the other thing. Only gotten about five hard drives. Right on. So there is... Do you care about spoilers? Of like recipe spoilers? Or are you the kind of person that looks stuff up on the wiki? Right, so that goes down the whole way, and that really changes the vibe over here. So I need to find a way to transition from that shape. One, two, three. Um, oh yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm only at the middle of phase three, so I don't really have any story spoilers. Um, so recipe spoilers you're okay with. So just let me pop open the wiki. Um, satisfactory wiki.gg if you need it. But then if you look up your recipe that you want to do, heavy modular frames, uh, this one in the middle, heavy encased frame. So it replaces screws with concrete, which is way easier to get. Again, something else you can just grab from nearby. You don't want to put concrete on a train. Um, concrete is just something you people grab from everywhere. Um, but it replaces... Uh, it does inc it increases the steel pipe, so you need more steel, right? Uh, and then it increases the amount of encased industrial beams as well. Uh, but you also get more, but there's no screws. So what that means is that there's a lot less stuff that you have to move around the factory. This is 240 screws a minute. Like that is at least a Mark III belt, right? So if you want to make more than one of these, then you're depending on what your belt capacity is, you really are hosed. So... It, if you are trying to make more than one, then this is the way to go with no screws. So should I mainly be putting the harder to create material on trains? Uh, again, it kind of depends on the scenario, right? It depends on, on how you want to. So my big Devastator build um, is, um, is it's got all re raw resources coming in via train just because there was i just need a lot of stuff and i wanted to do all the factory bits in one area and i have a main bus that allows me to transport things around right so this is going to come out to here i guess This is going to go away. How did I handle that on the other side? Did I just leave it as a face? I think I did. Yeah, okay. So that basically takes out whatever window plan I had. Um, that still stops there, though. So this is going to go like this. I could still have a window if I wanted one. I 
I was wondering why I was running out of plates, and it's because I'm, um... Because I'm building all these walls. Alright, so that feels really funny. That is a weird way... ...to handle that. Can't say I'm a fan. So... I think the thing to do here might be... ...try and add some shape. It's not terrible. Again, like... It's not the best. Sometimes you just have to play with stuff until it looks right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's... Do I have seven on the other side as well? No, it's eight. Okay, so these are the middle. Can't do that, which is annoying. Do that, though. And then I can't do anything else on the top. And now I can't select those. I feel like these windows are a little bit buggy. If I did that and put a window... No, can't do that either. I might try to get the other windows from the awesome shop to see what I can do. I see. So you're transporting things like iron ore, copper ore, limestone, etc., in one area to making a factory for creating each material you need. Yeah. So in in the Devastator, you know what? I can just when I that we're gonna lose the light here in a second, and when I do, um, I'll load up my other save and I'll show you. Hopefully, it won't crash. It's pretty big. Um, we've been having trouble with it in 1.0. So, but we'll take a look. Um, yeah. The fact that this continues on, I feel like I have to maybe. Bring this all the way down. It's feeling like it's kind of not making sense. We may change the angle on this too. Um, That's going to be tricky. How are we going to do that? Let's just do foundations for now. So just in terms of the shapes, do that. Did I do anything over here? I think I just filled it in. Quite sure how to figure that out. So this had skylights, but of course this doesn't have anything above it. Um, it's supposed to have a floor. So we can't do the skylights on that side. So the the fact that there's no window over here below this line doesn't matter so much because we've got this skylight that kind of lets the light through. So because I want to make some uh, maximize the space over here. I think what we'll do is try to figure out a way to do a window. 
underneath everything. Because this, this height is fine. I don't think I need to do anything below that. I wish they gave us more window options. That would be nice. Obviously, that's not going to stay there. So then down here, I'd want to have a window. And I guess we could keep it high. That gives a decent amount of space there. Problem is that we don't have anything, I don't think, that we can put in here that's going to let us do it. So we may have to do um, this, which we would want to do anyway for the stripe that we've got happening over there, right? So that does free up that level if I wanted to put a window in. I just would have to put some, if I wanted to put a row across it, I'd have to do the same thing out here. So it'd be like that, bump it out. Zoop it down. It actually kind of looks cool. I may want to change the style of window. I guess we have to take all of these out, don't we? I do find it helps when you're building your factories to do um, like rough sketches, like just get the form down first and then worry about deleting stuff and getting the details in later. This will help, I think, what I want. And I think we can replace these windows without having to rebuild them. So like if I wanted to change that window style, I think I could just go to my windows, grab this and just like hold control. Yeah, I could totally switch it. Okay. So if we decide to change the vibe of it, we can. And right away you can see the difference that makes, right? Like over here, even though we've got a wall, it still feels pretty open because of these skylights. As you're walking down like this doesn't feel too claustrophobic but then over there it feels a lot more bright now that we've added that window even though this is a very low ceiling this still feels nice and open i think that's the biggest thing in this game that i don't like is feeling claustrophobic And we should still be able to do some cool stuff in here. Where do the skylights stop? They are on the second one. So what we might do here, just to mimic the skylights, is see if we can't put in a little bit of a wall. might have to do this from the outside. See if we can't do something like this. Uh, yeah, I guess it would have to be Oh no, that's not the right spot want you on this piece. Yeah, because then I think this is also green. Maybe it doesn't go past here, I can't remember. Right, so then the skylights go to, I think it's the, said it was the second one in. So we do the same thing here. 
this unfortunately might not work on this side. So all I'm doing is just kind of like mirroring where Oh, I was wrong. I was one off. So mirroring where the skylights start. And there's actually a two two chunk bit in the middle where we could actually have I could have two windows instead of one long one, but I don't know. This may not look good because of the way that this is shaped. I don't know if I like that it continues. Like it stops before the end. I might want to try and center it underneath this window. That does feel a little bit strange. Although, you know, asymmetry is not bad. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that sticks out. Well then. Uh, yeah, that's a no. We can't do that. Okay. If that's the case, then I would say that underneath that first panel, this is where we have to stop it. Yeah, so it'll look cool from the outside, symmetrical. Um, not from the inside, but you can sort of see like how this doesn't really feel very good, whereas this does because there's like a good solid piece that the window connects to. So I really feel like I might have to to change the way that this this is shaped here, just for this one side. I'm, I don't think it'll affect it too much from the front. But anyway, we're losing the light, so I'm gonna save the file, and uh, I'm gonna load up Devastator to show rapidity. Um, a larger factory that's kind of like consuming a biome. This does look pretty nifty at night, I have to say. Um, so um, just give me a second here. Let's just save this. If the game crashes, then I will reboot the game. The, the stream shouldn't crash. 35. Uh, wheel, jack, roof. All right, uh, let's just exit to the main menu. Oop. And then we'll load up uh, Devastator. This has got 1100 hours. Not all on Devastator, but for a good chunk of it. So let's hope that this actually works. And uh, if I'm anywhere near the main bus, then Rapidity will get a good idea about how I'm assuming some of its trains, some of its belts. It's just a lot of stuff. All right, so we are definitely near the main bus. Cross your fingers, this is not gonna crash. Uh, I'm not gonna hypertube it. I'm just gonna fly around. Do I have the hover pack? I want jet pack. Do I have fuel? I do. Okay, so uh, this main belt bus comes all the way down here and has, as you can see, it has raw resources on it. So this is not anything too, too fancy. There are some products like um, steel and cable and wire. Those are just being produced in those buildings and then being sent into other buildings, right? So like you're talking about heavy modular frames. That's my heavy modular frame factory right there. And it's pulling all this stuff in from down there. That's that's how that's going. Uh, the trains are down the other end. So let's just, let's risk it. We'll see what's up. Um, I'm gonna go in this one. So I'm thinking about putting a train line down the middle here, but there's all the main ingredients coming in. It's a lot of belts, but yeah, as you get closer to the front here, it becomes more and more raw resources. And then the train station 
is just dropping everything off. So if you want to play this way, it's uh, it's hard on your system because it's a lot of stuff in one area. Right? So that train is coming in. I don't remember which one that is. It looks like it might be from the Green Valley. So over there, there's a train station. And the only thing that train station is doing, even though it's not rendering in, is pulling in the resources from over there. So if I go to my map, you can see, I know it's a little bit much. But like, here's the train station, scavenger. And the only thing that this train station is doing is collecting all the coal, all the iron, and all the concrete and putting it on the train. The train then um, comes around here and goes to the train stations, which are down here, uh, dumps everything off, and then it leaves. And it just does a loop. It just goes out here. It'll go to the roundabout. Uh, well, actually, it'll go down this way for this particular train. It'll go get his stuff, and then it just comes back and drops off. And because I know the timing, and we have like two or three cars for everything that's on that train, then we obviously get an output. And I'll go down and look at the output now so you can see what's going on there. So underneath the trains, we have all of the bins pulling everything out. And I said that was Scavenger, right? So let's go find Scavenger. So there's the Scavenger train. I've got 600 coals a minute on two belts. I've got 300 copper, uh, 1600 iron, and I'm also bringing in, looks like, uh, quartz and now um, Samor with 1.0. Uh, there's the Sam. So you can see all the belts from that train come in here and they're just being sent along here and then they join up with the main bus and I've got everything in a spreadsheet kind of mapped out as to what's going where. Once they get down here it's just a matter of lining them up with where they're going on the bus and sending them down the line. So that's one way to do it. Uh, there are other things like the iron nodes over there. There's no need to put a train on them because they're right here. So we just use the train station as like a, as a carriage so like this, these belts just go inside this building and they just basically pop out right here and they go down that way so the idea for this factory is the factory is situated in this area here in the middle of the biome so i'm pulling in resources from around here and around here and bringing them all into the factory and so instead of a bunch of really small factories, I essentially have a bunch of really small factory floors. I shouldn't say small, but so like this is doing copper. This is doing iron. Um, it's obviously not finished being decorated. We're in the process of making this look like a transformer. And so over here, we've got smelting happening at the front. We've got refineries making copper ingots, smelters making copper ingots. And then when you go upstairs, it's just doing copper products. So we're doing things like cable and wire. And they're just being sent on to the next phase. And they just match up and they go and they get connected. Oh, we're losing the light here too. So these all just get spat out the side of the building. And then they connect up to the main bus and they go down to the next thing. I think those are going to stitched iron plates. So in a way, what's nice about this is that when you make a thing, you don't have to take it on a train to send it halfway across the map to your other factory. I just have to send it across the street to the other side. The complicated part there is finding the room to do that in a way that you think looks good and doesn't look like spaghetti. So that's, that's the challenge. Um, but I have got a train plan to come in here because I want to have a storage room. And so the idea is that the train is going to be dropping off stuff from my starter factory and putting it up into my storage room for me to take advantage of. And you can sort of see my train station plans and all that stuff happening down here. Yeah, this is definitely more of a mess. We were messing around with this when 1.0 came out, but then it started crashing and I just kind of gave up. So there's not really much um, 1.0 content happening here 
because I have not spent much time in this since the crashes. Uh, but that's that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is kind of what I'm doing in the other save, which is to create like smaller factories that are just doing one thing. Like I've got an iron hide factory that just smelts iron into ingots and that's it. And then it sends the ingots somewhere else. So you can approach them in both ways. I think the easiest way for a new player is to not do this. This is complicated. Um, you can aspire to do this, but I think you'd be better off to have something like this doing end game products like doing turbo motors and like nuclear products and um uh aluminum stuff because by that point you have drones and you can like bring stuff in via drone bring stuff in via train that kind of thing and that yeah, i think is is useful but for the early game to mid game stuff like all the way up through computers you'd be better off i think just doing a straight up factory for stuff Anyway, uh, I am going to see what I can do to pass you on to somebody else playing Satisfactory here, because i got to go. i got to go to the gym. Uh, who is live? Let me just see. Let me just see. Usually we can find a Satisfactory player. Joe Hills is playing Satisfactory. Whoa, Jess was really fun. Did people want to go to see Whoa, Jess again? We sent everybody over yesterday. Um... I know Popcac was in our stream the other day. That would be a fun return. Uh, Hypno is playing Satisfactory. Do I follow Hypno? I do follow Hypno. So far, no crashes. Yeah, so far. I mean, we've only been in it for 10 minutes, but yeah, that's it's good. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. I'm not exactly sure where I want to invest my time now that I've been putting so much into the other save. I'd like to get the other save at least up to the point where we're manufacturing things, right? Um, yeah, I'll write Hypno if that's what folks are interested in. Happy to do that. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. Uh, that's one o'clock Atlantic. Um, Delara, hey, the sub right at the end. Thanks very much. That's a tier one sub from Delara. I need to add some place for the emotes and stuff to happen on the screen for the camera screen. Uh, but thank you ever so much, Delara. That's really very kind of you. Uh, yeah, I do need to wrap up. I've been live since one o'clock. It's now five. I've got to go to the gym. Um, but uh, we'll send you all over to Hypno. I'm going to be back again tomorrow at one o'clock Atlantic. That's UTC minus four hours, at least for now until the time change. Um, you can expect more satisfactory. I will be trying to get into Minecraft this weekend. So look forward to that. Uh, you can follow me on social media at Joel Duggan. I'm very easy to find. And hey, while you're out there, check out the Patreon page. It is the best way to support me. It is uh, very financially affordable. It's only $2 a month, which is less than the price of a cup of coffee. And it is one of the better ways to support your favorite creators because the cut that Patreon takes is pretty, pretty low. Uh, so if you are interested in the Discord, check out the Patreon. Everything else, as far as emotes and stuff like that, then, then Twitch is the, another way to support. Uh, obviously, Prime subs are great. However, you can also support with stickers. We've got those now too. So if you want to have some fun with stickers on the stream, there's a little heart uh, in the right-hand side of the overlay that you can click on and use some bits to throw some stickers and have some fun on stream i would uh, very appreciate it it's it's a lot of fun to do that kind of stuff so again i will see you all tomorrow thanks again for being here big shout out to sweet sandy who was here earlier moderating uh, they had to go to bed uh, i believe tomorrow is puppy day for sandy uh, so cross your fingers that everything is going well over there and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow bye for now <laughs>